This is my static Volkswagen Transporter, which was a dream I chased for three years. In that time, we've had some fun with it. Yeah, can I order exactly what the car in front of me ordered, please? No, I, uh, request? <laughs> unusual, yeah. We've changed its appearance. We've come down to G-Sign to change the look of the van. We kept the police happy by making it road legal. Don't forget, we slept in it too. Just woke up, I feel really cold. But the transporter has been accepted into its first ever car show and we need to get it ready for it because as it stands, I don't think it's anywhere near car show worthy. The wheels are curbed, the indicator's full of water. It's not quite shiny enough for my liking. This wing mirror is held on with duct tape. Door handles are really tatty. The number plate holder is broken and it's bloody dirty. Realistically, besides machine polishing, we haven't got a massive list of jobs to do on this thing, but they still need to be done nevertheless. With regards to our awful 1552s, we've got a, another solution to get them looking nice, but we aren't gonna address it in this video, but stay tuned because we're gonna get them sorted and we're gonna see an old friend of ours. I'll give you a clue, it's why it's a pickup truck. I didn't own it for long and I put some lovely BBS wheels on it, but we'll save that for another video. So let's move on to the next problem. Coming around to this uh, mirror then, there's actually a bit of a story behind this. Now I think these have got like aftermarket, like brackety hinge type things, which make them fold in. And I was driving, I didn't, hadn't long bought the van. I was driving down the side road and someone hit my bloody wing mirror Oh my God, this tape's pulled all the paint off there. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, I've just made more work for myself. So I put, I hit my wing mirror, I taped this cover on, and now the paint has come off this edge. And now it looks absolutely awful. So that's another thing we're gonna have to get sorted. Looks dreadful. But this mirror cap has been stuck on all the clips look like they've been broken previously and they're just stuck on. So we're gonna have to stick it back on ourselves. There's always something, isn't there? I've managed to get myself a mastic gun. So we're gonna have a go at sticking this mirror cap back on. So I'm gonna put plenty of tiger seal in here. There we are. Don't be alarmed, Tiger Seal is used in lots of body shop applications and this sort of job is perfect for it. The Tiger Seal is gonna set off really hard, so we need to make sure that we get the wing mirror put in the perfect position. So when it dries, it looks factory fresh. So the mask and tape just aids us in that process to make sure it does look good in the end. I'm gonna get these number plate holders off because I have got some new ones. This is proper minging. I have got some new ones off Amazon to put on. But I just wanted to touch upon the fact that this isn't a proper show vehicle. It's not polished to the nines. It isn't absolutely concourse. There's bits, there's little bits of rust. There's just things that aren't spot on about this. So it's not technically a show cup. But I do feel better about the fact that lots of cars that do go to show cars aren't really show worthy at all. So mine isn't that bad of a standard. It is slammed, it does, does look cool, it is nice, but it's just not proper show car spec. So don't come at me when you're at Tuck to saying, Ollie, that's not show quality, that's not this, it's not that. I know. i tell you what does really irritate me. It's like this number plate holder has just been held on with four screws. Why would you do that? There's already holes in the back designated for number plates to go on, but someone's thought, well, I don't know, we'll drill two more holes in the actual body of the van and make it look awful, make it start rust. Make it start rust? Let it start to rust. You watch, there'll be some bloody number plate sticky pads on here next. Oh. What is the point? 
four screws and some freaking sticky number plate tape. Where did they think this thing was going to come off? Some people, oh my god, they're just stupid. I also feel a little bit like I'm cheating because I'm taking the car to car shows that I haven't actually built. Now, I know at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's just showing off a cool vehicle, but I haven't built it. I'm not taking credit for someone else's work. I'm literally just showing what I own. I think I might get a Guinness World Book of Records for uh, changing number plates and taking the longest amount of time to do so. But the new plate is going in, in the back, it's looking good, and then all that was left to do, once that was clipped in, was do the same for the front. But don't worry, I won't bore you with that one. Just show you that we've done it. Because if I didn't show you, it wouldn't have happened. One job down, and you've probably noticed, if you're eagle-eyed, that the grill is out at the bottom here. Now, the grill just slots in there, which would be great if it actually clipped in, but it doesn't clip in. So I wonder if there is some clips missing on the bumper that receive the clips on here. The previous only solution was a screw through the front, which isn't very, not very OEM, not very good, and just a bit rubbish really. So I wondered if we could get that fi fixed on there the right way. But say, I don't know if there's something missing on the bumper to actually receive this. Even if we stuck it in, I think that would look better than having a screw on the front. Using my trusty bottle of Auto Finesse Finale, we got the plastics clean, ready for the Tiger Seal. I applied a generous amount to the plastics initially, then went back and applied even more. Like I said earlier, this is a common application in the body shop to use Tiger Seal. I'm sure there's lots of transporters that are held together by using this method. So I put up the grill to the bumper, it received it nicely, got it in place where it should be, and then I put the screw back in just to give it a firm grip. Now, once this was in place, I then went and got masking tape happy, taped it up to make sure that really wouldn't move anywhere. Now it was time to get the handles out so we can get them over to Liam. So we're going to remove this little bung on the end of the door here. And there's a little screw right down the end. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but we need to undo that to pull the front part of the handle away. I have done this sort of thing before. I used to work in a paint shop. I haven't done it for a long while. I know you've got to be careful because you can drop the screw inside the door and that is not good. So this front piece should just pull out, which is the barrel. And then I'm going to tighten that screw back up so we don't lose it. So first piece out. And then we have to flick the cable off the back of the handle. So then we should be able to pull this back and then free the handle away from the door. Both door handles removed and it seemed to go pretty easy to be fair. From memory, these were an awful job, but seems to work fine. So now we need to get on with the sliding door, which I need to do a little bit more work to get access to the screw, which holds the part of the handle in, because I've got to remove the back door card, if you like, off the door to get access, I believe. I've never done one of these before. Exactly that. I had to pop the door card off. This was pretty easy, however, there were a few hidden screws, which I didn't actually find to start with. Once the door card was popped off, I then had to pull the insulation out from inside the door, where I found a T25 screw holding the handle in, the top part, exactly like the ones were previously. Once I loosened that off, I was then able to pull that out, which then gave us the access to pull the main handle out itself. And just like that, we've got all the door handles removed. We now need to head over to Liam, drop them off to him so he can get them painted for us. Then we can put them back on. Once they're back on, we can wash the van, get it prepped so we can do some machine polishing. Not that I want to, but I feel like it needs it. Once it's polished and shiny, I might feel a little bit more at ease at taking this thing to a car show where loads of people are gonna be picking at it and seeing what it's like. But the paint shop was having issues with the handles reacting and we were running out of time to get them done and get them on the van. Tucked is in T minus 14 hours. We've just got the door handles back, so we need to get them whipped in. 
As far as the van goes, it's looking pretty fresh. I haven't machine polished it because I've simply not had the time to do it. Let's whip these handles in and then I'm happy to say once that's done, the van is ready. Installing the handles should be exactly the same process as taking them off, but going in reverse. But as always, these things never go to plan, so I'm not gonna count on it working. And we couldn't count on it. Later on that night, the passenger side door handle stopped working. But thankfully for us, Tucked is a show which is based around appearance. Practicality isn't something that's considered, so there wasn't an issue for us. That fresh coat of paint work makes the handles pop and look like they should have been from factory, not how they were before. We'll just have to address the broken handles later on, but for now, they're gonna serve the purpose and do us well. There may have been insignificant things and lots of people probably had prep that was much more involved than what mine is, but I can safely say the Transporter is now ready for its first show of 2024, tucked at the museum in 14 hours time. But unfortunately, that is all we have got time for in this video, so if you have enjoyed it, smash that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, Check out other videos on the channel. If you are heading to Tuck tomorrow, be sure to stop us, say hello. I'd love to see as many of you guys as possible. But thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.